There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. Yeah, I hear you, Bob. I mean, Wilson. All right, so this is the adult beverage. This is the adult beverage bending party. We have Manny, Mo, Jack, and Wilson. <laughs> okay, you ready? Ready. You, here's your okay. clamps. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Now, all these guys are kind of shy about being on video because they're all secret squirrels. I'm just yes, sir. No, it's okay, Lieutenant. All right, so there we go. Now we're gonna pull it out of the steamer. We're gonna try this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wow this protective cover for my table isn't big enough, but it's all right. We're just gonna smear some of this Gorilla Glue on here. Right, this shit expands when it dries. Yeah, I know. It's a smear campaign. Oh man, it's not it's open the end. Oh mm. god, it's not coming out. Let me just pour this shit on there. Oh, then it's gonna be good. So we just apply liberally. Yeah, it's like it's like syrup. Oh yeah, look oh, at that. Those look good with some biscuits, and butter. Biscuits, butter. All right. You better run your finger across that and spread it no, out. No, here so. you you lick it. Oh my God. Spit it out. <laughs> wow. I mean, there goes you giving me a prostate exam. <laughs> Come on, Manny. I'm gonna keep that off there. All, All right. right, okay. Okay, so we're gonna put this one on like this. Yes. And I'm gonna take this glove off because it's trashed. Okay, hold on, hold on, not yet. It's not gonna take too man. All right, hold on. Yes. Yes. I'm not really sure my floor is going to be happy with this. No, because it's dripping all over the cabinet. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I don't care. Okay. Now, put your body against it and Shut try up. and bend Shut it a little. Sure, but I just want to get the clamps in. Yeah, and this is where I stick to the Whoa. Okay. going it's working slowly now <laughs> it, it's not happening <laughs> but you know what that means if at first you don't succeed try try again uh, at first you don't succeed more rum and coke yes okay what I've learned here is I need a steel strap a thin steel aluminum whatever strap on the outside to keep it from breaking away because this is the stretchy side that's the compression side but plywood bends it really does bend but you know I've got like a, a high point here that I don't want so I'm gonna you know it's a work in progress but actually this is pretty cool and because I laminated two pieces together, um, there won't be any spring back. And I'm going to probably test that tomorrow and see if there's spring back. But anyway, all right, that's it for today. Okay, this was more of just a test to see if it retains its shape, if it's been laminated with two pieces, or if there is spring back. Well, really, very little spring back if any at all hi folks okay I've been uh, soaking a couple pieces of oak I'm just gonna try one piece and if it breaks I've got a spare I've cut them to a three foot length and I've modified my mold my jig here and basically I cut out for these little blocks that I made 
And so this one is screwed to there. I'm going to put my piece of wood along with this strip of aluminum. I, I was looking for a piece of stainless, but all I had around was aluminum. So it might stretch, I don't know. And so I'm gonna clamp it in here using one of these clamps. This is the plan anyway. And then that will fit in here when I clamp, when I pull it around. I've given it some extra length so I have some leverage out here. So I'm gonna give this a try. I'll set my camera up so you can catch all the action. Okay then, I've, just to recap, I've uh, soaked, and I wish I could have found some ash. Um, I, I can source some later if this doesn't work out, but I've used red oak. I don't know if it's good or bad to bend with, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I soaked it for four days in a barrel of water. It got a little fibrous on the outside. Maybe when it dries I can sand it, don't know. I've had it in the steamer for an hour and 45 minutes and I've modified my mold, my uh, jig. So here we go, let's give it a try and see if this works out. Measure center, because I've got center marked on my mold so everything fits properly, I hope. So let's give her a try. There's one piece, get this closed back up. Oh, Christ. Come on. Wow. Okay, wow, success. Okay, I have a successful radius bend. There's no glue on it. I still haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna do the next one, but um, I think once this solidifies here, let me turn this guy off. Once this thing solidifies, I'll re-steam that other one and um, and then I'll put some glue on it and clamp them in place so I got double thickness. This is cool. I am excited, gang. Well, it's the next day and while I'm waiting for this to dry this evening, I've put the other stick that I had back into the water barrel and I'm gonna go ahead and start the mounting process for the aluminum plate. And so what I'm doing, I've already laid it out for three of these bolts that I've antiqued. And the way that I did that is I used, because brand new, let me show you here, brand new, I didn't want that look. I wanted something that looks like it's been around and beat up. So I sanded on it and ground on it a little bit. The uh, radius, the outside diameter is a little big, so I have to make them a little bit smaller. I've done a test piece, drilling. And so now I am going to go ahead and get these elevator bolts drilled out. Um, I don't have the nuts for them, so I'm gonna have to take a trip this afternoon and go get some nuts for it. But uh, I'll get these 
first three holes drilled and set and sized and all that. The way that I've antiqued this, and I left some in here way too long, they're completely rusted, but it's vinegar and salt. And you can see they're, they are trashed. It worked its way all the way up. So I only left the other one in for a day or so. These are much more rusted. I didn't wipe them off when I took them out. Um, I kind of like the look, but I'm not sure if it'll stay. You can see it got up into the threads too, so I'll have to protect the threads with WD-40 or something, but that's a nice rusted look. I might go ahead and uh, sand these a little bit and see if I can't smooth them out a little and see what they look like. Here's all three versions of it. Um, this one's out of the box. This one's slightly oxidated. These two were rusted at the same time. I just sanded the rust off of this one. And this one's fully rusted, but I'm a little worried about the fully rusted one because I think the rust is just going to continue and eat right through it. Um, I'll let this set for a few days and make a decision, see if that, uh, you know, maybe if I, I don't know how to stabilize the rust and still get about a good clear coat over it to protect it. All right, the first thing that I did is I used a punch and punched out, you know, where I wanted to drill. Then I used an eighth inch bit and about every three quarters of an inch down, you have to pull the, pull the bit out and clean it off with a pick because there's nowhere for the, uh, for the uh, tailings of the wood to go. So it gets trapped in there. Now I've switched to my uh, other bit here and I'm going to attempt to just drill deep enough to sink this head. This is kind of critical right here. I can kind of see which way I'm leaning by just starting it slowly. Let's go really slow. You can see it doesn't take much. Just a little bit deeper. I'm just countersinking the heads of these things. The bit tends to walk a little bit. Just a little more. It's so critical. Yeah, I got it deeper on one side than the other, but uh, I can sand also. This is really difficult, I gotta tell you. It's very, very difficult to get this micro depth by hand. This is what it looks like here. Where am I? There we are. So it's flush, pretty flush. And it's got a little bit of a bow to it on the back side you can see that so it'll I can adjust the depth of it by um, how far down I pull it through and then I'm gonna have to switch to a, a 5 16 bit and go all the way through but the reason I have to do it in stages is one I need a pilot hole so I go straight and uh, two Um, if I, if I drill that big hole first and try and set it in the proper way, there's nowhere for the, the tip of the bit on this drill bit to go. It would just walk all over the place. So I'll let you know how all of my 12 holes come out when it's done. Well, here's something I never thought I would ever use. Uh, I bought this at a 
garage sale, I think. I used to have one and I gave it away to somebody. And I saw this and I thought, you know, for five bucks or whatever it was. So I was able to clamp this to the table and use it as a drill press. Um, what What's happened is this Forstner bit that I'm using <clears throat> is not following the pilot hole that I drilled. It's off a little bit. So if I were to drill freehand, it's going to go for that pilot hole and everything will be off center. So I had to figure out a way to, to get this thing um, to where I could control it. Well, I got one in and it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, a little shiny. You know, I just went over it with the sander a little bit before I put it in. I don't know. It's hard to say what to do. Uh, I kind of like, I kind of like this one. Gives it that used rustic, steampunky look. And I'm gonna have the copper. All this copper tape is gonna be running on the inside here. Um, so I don't know which one contrasts the copper better. Probably the darker one. Decisions, decisions. What I've done is I've sanded the heads on 18 of these and then I broke out my stamp kit and I'm just stamping random random numbers on them just to make them look like they were actually a part and you know old because they were done by hand not a machine and then uh then I'll soak them in vinegar and salt for a day. Okay, they're in the vinegar and salt. They've all been stamped. I didn't get any vinegar and salt up on the threads this time and I'm not enclosing it. Enclosing it does evil things. Of course, this has been in here a long time, but I mean, they're about gone. It ate these things up. Okay, I've switched gears, haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, to back to this guy so I hooked the steamer back up and it's starting to percolate read some more stuff on steamers today um, from a boat builder and they're the best wealth of information on this stuff aside from certain furniture guys but <clears throat> basically <clears throat> what he wrote is that don't put your wood in the steamer until you're at temperature so don't let it sit there. You can soak it and then put it in here, but um, the longer you put it in there at lower temperatures and you can, you can actually over steam, you can under steam, They're pretty complicated anyway. And I don't, I don't have a link for it. So, but all right, onward and sideways. So there's going to be a bunch of spring back when we, when we uh, pull these clamps out, I have my um, my assistant Sam helping me. Secret Sam, we call him. Sometimes we call him Secret Squirrel, but <laughs> right. yeah, I got all these anonymous friends, by the way. All right, the all right, doctor is. We all have a weird accent, like the last. Yeah, that's right. All right, so we'll pull this thing off. Aren't these bitching clamps? That's pretty freaking awesome. I didn't have as much that much. And then you just go. All right, so those are the last two. All right, let me goop this up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because as some of you might know, Gorilla Glue requires moisture and water and, and I know there's a bunch of water and moisture on the piece that's in the steaming oven right now but I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of water on this guy all right here comes the fun part gorilla glue on the floor man it drips everywhere it's a mess <laughs> but I I have a good chisel, so I... Alright, here we go. Come on, baby. Should've took it out of the freezer a little longer. <laughs> it's 
stuff's like sap, man. But that's the cool thing about using Gorilla Glue is because everything is already moistened and wet and ready for it. The bummer about it is it, um, it makes a big mess to clean up after it dries. Now you notice I still have all my stuff going in the steamer. Even though uh, I read that article today from the boat builder that said you can oversteam. Incidentally, I steamed for um, an hour and 45 minutes. And let me tell you, it's been really cold out here. So. I've burned everything, you know, all my bar stools. And, no, just kidding. <laughs> all right, never burn a bar stool. That's a party foul. All right, here we go. Power off. Those rubber gloves don't work on steam. <laughs> Just saying. All right, so you want to check the natural bend, and it looks like it wants to go this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the halfway point so I get the center right. And this should be three feet, so one six. There it is. We're going to put that on right in the center point. We're going to stick the goopy one on here. This is going to be awkward. All right, let's start bending it around. Um, tell you what, go ahead and uh, put an end clamp on if I can push this one around a little bit. Ah, oh, shit, it's not going to go. Well, um. <laughs> oh, I just thought about this. You probably should have glued the outside. Nope. Yeah, I probably should have, huh? But it doesn't really matter. Okay. All right. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Let's start like this. Okay. Can I put one of these small parts? I don't know. Can I get this thing on here somehow? We gotta bend that thing around somehow. I wish this were about a foot longer on each side. Um, how can we do this? All right, let's work. We've had success here. Just see your hammer right there, so I tap this block back up in here just a little bit. Slip that on me. I don't want to squish too much, but I want them tight enough to get a good glue bond. All right, and that's how it's done. <laughs> or, you know, that's how we try and do it. I don't know, it's all an experiment. 